Ghana. I mean, it was a reggae tour. I had some hip-hop artists and hip-life artists showing love. I mean, like Adam, like D-Flex, and a few other people like that. We had fun. We thrilled everybody who came to watch us, and we gave them their money's worth. I mean, for, more, for me, the most important thing was the fact that we were able to meet with the fans and get that eye contact and to tell them that we were still on the road. So, all in all, we had a very, very rollicking time. And this happens to be your seventh album. Seventh album. And you decided to christen it Born Dread. Born Dread, yeah, we're Born and then Dread. I, yes, I remember I asked you mm -hmm. about uh, the concept, what actually went into the production of this very album. Right. Yes. Right. I mean, the album is a very tight one. We work very hard at it. And, I mean, people have re received it quite well. Reggae music is that kind of music you don't dare into in this country if you want to be rich. We don't want to be rich. We rather want to spread the message. We want to do jaworks. Money doesn't frighten us at all. See? We frighten money. That is why we are getting into reggae music, to show the people the way. At the Thema Sports Stadium, it was all crazy. I mean, the fans were there till 5.30. See? Hit after hit, until I ran out of all my rep, and I had to get down the stage. And I remember, I mean, during the, one of your interviews, I think on another platform, you said that it's, it's free, you can come in with anything oh know. yes anything herbal you know yes anything herbal i mean we live natural <laughs> see yeah man black cross is a natural man can't see the herbs i'm able to live and look as fresh as i'm looking now seeing okay. rastafari be the glory okay amen 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 all right so moving away from bond dread tour i heard you on radio and um I don't know, how comfortable are you when people describe you as a controversial figure? Are you okay with that? Well, some people think that's a trademark and some people think it's a brand. For me, I'm doing Jaja Works. No matter how you describe me, I mean, some people have also described me as a dirty person. Mm. Some people have also described me as a person who cannot close his mouth. Wow. You know, I respect everybody's views. I don't fight people for their opinions and views because they are like noses. Everybody mm. has the tiny one there. Wow. I'm irate with that. Wow. Yeah, okay, man. so I heard you on radio, as usual, uh, talking about black saints right. and uh, celebrating African um, 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 achievers. Right. Okay, and then you raised issues with a coat of arms, Ghana's coat of arms. You said that there is nothing Ghana about um, the coat of arms, and I, I took pain to print it out. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ghana's coat of arms, and uh, I brought it here for Black Rasta to tell me what, it, what exactly he means by there is nothing Ghanaian about the coat of arms. C can you give me some education on that? Well, I will. The coat of arms of any country is supposed to represent the country. That coat of arms does not represent us what do as you a mean? people. I mean, it's very simple. First of all, let us look at who commissioned the so-called coat of arms of Ghana. It was commissioned by the Queen of England, Elizabeth II. And it came into practice or into use on the fourth day of March 1957. That was before? Before independence. Mm -hmm. So outright, it becomes a colonial legacy. See? And you see, Kwame Nkrumah was that so was busy. By no, it was commissioned by the Queen of England, Elizabeth II. They paid one Amon Korte. But he is Ghanaian, that's my point. That is it. Not all Ghanaians are Ghanaians. There are Ghanaians who call themselves Americans. There are Ghanaians who call themselves something else. Not every black man is black. You could have a black skin, but you are white inside you when you wear coat and tie and drink tea every mm -hmm. afternoon. You can't call yourself a Ghanaian. There are Ghanaians who cannot even speak a single Ghanaian language. There are Ghanaians who look down on Akpla and Fertility. There are Ghanaians who look down on Tuo Zafi and me and Kuka. You understand? So these people, for me, are not Ghanaians. See? So the fact that I'm on Korte, with all respect, I mean, was Ghanaian, his past is gone now. He was commissioned by the Queen of England. He was paid money which he pushed into his pockets, not into the coffers of the country. See, the Queen of England sat down with Mr. Amon Korte and dictated what should go into the coat of arms. Let me make a little bit more sense. If you look at the coat of arms, mm -hmm. the two eagles don't represent us. What is that? What, what does it stand for? Go through Wikipedia, go through Encyclopedia Britannica, these two eagles are not described. They don't represent us. What are they for? You went to school just like me. Did they ever tell you what those eagles stand for? 
It doesn't make no meaning. We don't produce eagles in this country. Mm -hmm. If it was in Nigeria, I would have said, well, Nigeria is one country that produces a whole heap of eagles. See, the Nigerian coat of arms has two horses. They, they are one of the countries that produce the highest number, number of horses in the whole of Africa, in Nigeria. So that represents the eagles. My brother, when was the last time you saw an eagle in Ghana? They put that there. Remember the eagle is an American symbol. See? Now you look at the cross that separates that thing. It's called the St. George's Cross. Who is St. George? What, what has St. George got to do with our country? St. George's Cross, that cross that divides that thing into four. That's the name. Mm -hmm. St. George's Cross. See? It don't make no sense. See that golden lion there, spread there. I'm not talking magic, neither am I talking religion. I'm talking facts. All right, so you Look at the lion, that golden lion. Manchester fans will tell you that, hey, Manchester. See? But that is no Manchester lion. It is a lion that represents Great Britain. That is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. It's go through it, read, and you will see that that is the meaning. My brother, they put it in our coat of arms because they sponsored it and paid a Ghanaian to misrepresent us. Now look at the neck of the eagles. You will see red, gold, and green with a, a black star hanging there loosely. Don't be mistaken. Don't think that is the Ghana flag. That thing came out before the Ghana flag. Because the green is up. Yeah, man. Check it out, man. It came before the Ghana flag. See? That, these were the colors of the African liberation movement. And that star there is the Marcus Garvey Black Star Liner, which got defunct in 1919, 10 years after Nkrumah was born. See? So if you want to beat up a child, you give the child a little sugar. And when the child starts smiling, you smack. Pa! Pa! When a rat is biting you in the night, it blows a f. When it's cool, it bites. When you shake, it blows air again. That's the same thing the Queen of England did. See? To deceive her. Look at those swords. You see those swords? Mm -hmm. Why are the swords there? You see the stool there? They represent just one people, Ashanti. Why? Because they got a lot of gold from there. They didn't get gold from the northern region, so they, they never cared about northern region. That's why they first of all called it the Gold Coast. Look at the mine. You see that mine standing there to remind us of our suffering. Look at the so-called castle. That's a dungeon where our forefathers were slaughtered, where we call the what what castle. It's a shame that we call it a castle because this was a place where my great-grandmother was raped, where my great-grandfather was slaughtered like a little goat. See? I mean, a place of murder and killing. We call it a castle and glorify it Black with all the names. For the sake of time, what exactly do you want us to do about this court? Burn it, man, because this don't make no sense. It doesn't represent us. It's a colonial legacy. It's an insult to us, 22 million intellectuals in this country. Wonderful. We still carry, carry uh, 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 the, I mean, Queen's legacy. Oh, Bedrin, what in this represents us? Okay, so Kwame Fache is here with us. He will be joining us. Akofa is also here. I, I will take uh, their, their opinion on this. Um, <laughs> so they should get ready in case they don't know. Uh, Rasta, so we should bend this. Throw it, fling it far, we far get, away. We should get, we should get something uh, better. Artist to 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 something this. better. This Friday, you say you're you're performing again. Yes. Why? I'm doing it with Busy Signal. Mm. I'm doing it with Kip Rich, mm. Samini, and some other artists at okay. the Dome. So we would like the all dome? the fans. Yeah, on man. Friday, all the fans okay. to pass okay. through will throw more light and on see that. the fire of reggae music. Okay, Black Rasta. I'm sure you've got a message for your fans, your family. Uh, talk to them. Well, I tell you, man, my beard will grow long until it touch the ground. I will never shave it because I don't take no money from politician. You understand? Some people will shave it and throw away them turban, but Black Rasta stand talawa. Rastafari! Celestia. Get them away. Fire burn them all. Okay. So we'll go for a break. When we return, Kwame Facha will join me. Uh, he's talking about um, the, 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 uh, the concept. Anyway, so we'll be back after this break. So guys, tell me, why do you think that Vodafone gives more value? Ah, now we see as my Ebisa. Look, with Vodafone, you text and talk, sir, you even get tired. Double value, for instance, give you double bonus and 50